Come learn about lordosis, kyphosis, and scoliosis. When we look at the normal alignment of the spine, that we know the spine should be completely straight from the front, and it should have normal, healthy curves from the side. And why these curves exist is to help make the spine more mechanically sound during gravitational compressive forces during activity and help distribute mechanical stress throughout the entire spine. These normal natural curvatures make the spine stronger, kind of like a coiled spring. Now, there are a number of spinal conditions that a person can develop that involves loss of these normal curvatures from the side, such as lordosis, kyphosis, and even scoliosis, which can affect the front. Now, the spine has three main sections, the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar spine. And each of these sections have their own curvature characteristic associated with that area. The cervical and the lumbar spines have something called a lordosis, and the thoracic spine has something called a kyphosis. Now, a lordosis refers to when the spine bends towards the front of the body. And when you look at it, when it starts bending towards the front of the body, kind of like in a C shape, then we know there's normal healthy ranges for these curvatures to exist. A normal lordosis for the cervical spine is typically between 20 and 40 degrees, and 40 degrees is considered to be the ideal number. A healthy range for a lumbar lordosis is between 40 and 60 degrees, and we know 40 degrees is considered to be the ideal number. If a person's degree falls below the, that range, it would normally be called a hypolordosis, and then if a, the curvature falls beyond that range, it will be called a hyperlordosis. A hyperlordosis in the neck means there's too much curvature. A hypolordosis in the neck means the curve is too straight. Very common for somebody to have a hypolordosis in the neck, but not really a hyperlordosis. In the low back, both things can occur. The person can have a hypo and a hyper. Hypolordosis is when the back is too flat, and it, when it's too, when there's a hyperlordosis in the low back, it's kind of like when they have a sway back or like a butt back posture, meaning too much curvature in that low back. Kyphosis is the opposite curvature. Instead of bending to the front, it bends to the back. And this is the, this is the type of curvature that's characteristic of the middle back. Kyphotic curvatures are when they bend to the back of the spine or like in a reverse C position. The thoracic spinal curvature should be a kyphosis, and we know the normal range is between 20 and 40 degrees. Hyperkyphosis is when it's diagnosed at 45 or 50 degrees or better. This is commonly referred to as a very rounded back. Now, sometimes this excessive rounding can, uh, can cause the spine to look significantly hunched, but we also know patients can develop a hypokyphosis, meaning they get too flat in the mid-back and they're too flat from the side. Both of, these, uh, both of those conditions are considered abnormal. Now, scoliosis is when we have a normal, natural straight spine that starts to develop a sideways curvature. Scoliosis curvatures, not only do they bend from the front, but they also twist into the concavity of the scoliosis adding this twist or this rotational component makes scoliosis a three-dimensional condition. We also know the rotation or the twist is into the concavity. Scoliosis, regardless of type, is always considered progressive, meaning it's in its very nature to worsen over time. There's never a normal curvature that's existed, but we know curves must be greater than 10 degrees or more to be considered or diagnosed as a scoliosis. Scoliosis, true scoliosis, is considered uncurable, but it can be highly, treat highly treatable, especially when it's treated early during its progressive natures. Now, even though we know there's three different types of spinal con uh, conditions, scoliosis, hyperkyphosis, hy hypokyphosis, hypolordosis, and hyperlordosis, we know all of these different conditions are definitely classified by their type, meaning an underlining cause. And underlining causes can be associated with different things. But the big differentiating factor I like to talk about here is something between a postural misalignment versus a structural misalignment. Postural mis misalignments are things that are normally just affected by pad posture.
posture. And we know bad posture can, can show uh, different things to occur in the patients in the way they stand, meaning developing with a hyperkyphosis, meaning they're standing very slouched. What I want to talk about is the true structural conditions. True structural conditions can be affected when a patient moves, but meaning, but they can't really get out of it. If it's just posture, meaning when they bend and they move, the condition totally revolves itself. I mean, they can stand completely out of the hyperkyphosis or the hyperlordosis or whatever they see. If it's, or if it's a true structural condition, meaning the structure of the spine is truly like this as a result of remodeling over time. We know when the patients move, they can't correct the condition. They can't correct the hyperkyphosis. They can't correct the scoliosis, or they only can reduce it, but some of it stays. This means the condition is structural. Once the condition has become structural, it is more complex to treat. It needs more than just general physiotherapy or general exercises or general chiropractic care. It needs a structural approach that's designed to help reduce the structural deviations that are occurring in that spine, and normally this involves integrating multiple therapies and treatments into a comprehensive model to try to get structural reduction. Unfortunately, if these types of structural deviations are left untreated, the, these things can continue to progress where they become severe in nature, where sometimes a, where orthopedic surgeons could recommend invasive spinal surgery. However, if conservative treatment is administered early before they become severe, or at a very at a, early at the time of diagnosis to try to reduce it below surgical threshold, many times surgery can be completely avoided. Now, spinal surgery does come with its own number of serious potential effects, side effects, and complications as a result of the surgery um, being in the spine for long periods of time. And we know here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we've been treating scoliosis in a, sp in a variety of structural spinal conditions non-surgically for over 20 years. And we know not all spinal conditions require surgery, meaning if we treat these curves, we can prevent spinal fusion and spinal surgery and avoid all the risk and complications associated with that type of treatment option. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.